Jackson Hotline is on the air. Oh, boy, that was atrocious. The old voice has now recovered. Clemson Hotline is on the air. A one-hour talk show giving Clemson fans a power hour of Tiger Sports Talk. Clemson Hotline is presented by y'all.com and brought to you by Amtrak. Clemson Hotline is direct from Tiger Country on a network of radio stations across the great state of South Carolina. And a podcast edition of our show is available for download in iTunes. The best intro in the history of the program. As basically I whistled (laughs) the first word Clemson. Trying to recover from the ball game. A great ball game for all you Clemson Tiger fans. you got to be excited about the way the season got started. Look, let's face it. When you travel over to Atlanta, when you're playing a team from the SEC, it could go badly. Clemson did not won in Atlanta. It's well documented since the 2003 Peach Bowl against Tennessee. Many of you were just a little bit skeptical about maybe what you would see from this team, the offensive line. How would the pistol formation work? We'll give you all of our thoughts on the ball game and much, much more right here on the Clemson Hotline on the John C. Calhoun Radio Network. Hashtag TN Talk on Twitter. Stay with us. We'll be right back, Tiger fans. Send us your thoughts, emails, Clemson81 at gmail.com. We'll be right back. Blake Austin of South Carolina Farm Bureau is an insurance agent you can count on to meet all your needs. Home, auto, health, life, you name it, Blake's got you covered, and he can save you on your yearly rates. Call him now for a free quote, 803-259-5008. That's 803-259-5008. Or just go to ClemsonSportsTalk.com and click on the Farm Bureau logo to be connected to Blake. Do like I do and work with the best agent around, and you can tweet that. From now on, your day can start with a perfectly brewed cup of coffee or tea thanks to the Bosch Tassimo Home Brewing System and unique barcode technology. From now on, your dishes will wash in virtual silence thanks to the quietest dishwasher line in North America. Bosch dishwashers were named number one in a best value by a leading consumer publication. And right now, you can get a great deal on Bosch appliances by visiting your local Best Buy retailer. Bosch, invented for life. Bosch offers the quietest dishwashers in North America and no major brand offers a quieter model at any Bosch price point. June 2012. Glass defined by similarly priced and designed models of major brands based on a leading consumer publication. June 2012. Tassimo is a registered trademark of Kraft Foods. Enjoy the Clemson football season at Seasons by the Lake Restaurant. Tiger Tailgate on the Terrace at Seasons Restaurant will be held every Clemson football game day, rain or shine, home or away, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. for those day games and noon to midnight for the evening kickoffs. Enjoy a large screen TV, a Bloody Mary and Mimosa Bar, specialty drinks, and a great tailgate menu all on the Seasons Terrace. For more information, call 656-7444 or visit their Facebook page, facebook.com slash Seasons by the Lake. I hope to see you on the Terrace. g Dog Gentle Dentistry at Oak Grove is located on Highway 1 near the Barnyard Flea Market. Modern, relaxing dentistry with TVs and headphones in every room, nitrous and even oral sedation. Digital diagnostic x-rays for better quality and 85% less radiation exposure. And check out their new Clemson patient special. Mention that you heard about G-Dog here on the Clemson Sports Talk programs and receive an extra 5% off all services through football season. If you don't have a regular dentist, go see my dentist, Dr. Rick Jackson at G-Dog. That's Gentle Dentistry at Oak Grove. Take your business to the next level with innovative website design from Foodog Media. Foodog can handle all your web, graphic, and social media needs. Call them today, 843-864-9268. That's 843-864-9268. Mention this ad and receive 10% off of your website. Foodog is a Clemson-owned business. See their portfolio at www.foodogmedia.net. May the food be with you. Clemson Tigers, we coming for you. Rolling along here 
on the Clemson Hotline. And it was Tiger football in Atlanta, Clemson and Auburn. I got to tell you, I apologize for the voice. I have to. Uh, you know, I get into these games just like you do. I'm, I'm not one of those guys who's going to sit there and not tell you where my allegiance lies. I try to give you as realistic picture and predictions as I can. And typically speaking, when I give you what you might take as bad news, you get on me, but I'm just trying to be realistic with you. I gave you a final score in this game. Our prediction was 27 to 14 Clemson. I actually thought Kyle Frazier played better than I expected. I know Frazier's numbers, when you look at them, going 11 for 27, 194 yards, and one touchdown and one interception. I, I, I think his numbers, as far as yardage-wise goes, came from a couple of blown plays by the Clemson Tiger defense, but he actually performed better than I thought. I was thinking more turnovers. Clemson's defensive line, though, played well. Tigers get it done 26-19, to closing out the 2010 national champions and legitimately becoming the team out of all the teams they've played except for Alabama, who's really had a great chance to beat them the past three seasons. I mean, you look at the way they came back against Alabama back in 2010, the way Auburn was able to come back against Clemson in 2010 and win that game late. All in all, Clemson and Alabama have been, been the two teams who have really frustrated the Auburn Tigers. And I commend some of their fans as they're coming out of the stadium who say to me, you guys are better than us, and we're fortunate that you didn't beat us in 2010. And I had more than one Auburn fan come to me with that regard, feeling like our program was headed in the right direction. We've got Nathan. We've got Sophie in the chat room. Appreciate them. If you're on the front page of TigerNet, just click join. Come on in. We don't bite in here. Hashtag TN Talk is the way to get to us. If you tweet to us throughout the week, we will read it here on the program. Bent Zero checks in. He's a loyal listener. He says the helmet rule has got to go. Auburn was intentionally ripping off Boyd's helmet. Either that or we got to figure out a way to duct tape that bad boy on Taj, Taj's head. Perhaps uh, Taj could have his ears enlarged. I'm not sure how that helmet continued to come off. There did appear to be some grabbing, but of all the helmets in the game, Taj Boyd's is the one that continues to fall off. And if it's me, and I'm Coach Sweeney, and, and, and I'm Coach Chad Morris, I work with Cole Stout. And I say, Cole, listen, when the helmet comes off, the next play, we're going to run we're gonna run the uh, little stop-and-go route. You know, we're going to give them a little pump and go like we did against Virginia Tech, and we're going to throw it deep because everybody's tuned in to Andre Ellington, Ellington at that time. And Andre Ellington was a man on the field. You know, I thought and I said before the game on Tiger Net Talk that DeAndre Hopkins, he led the team in receptions as a freshman yardage and touchdowns. He slid over and allowed a guy like Sammy Watkins to take himself to that next level. And both of those guys really battled back and forth, and I think for the better. Ultimately, it's for the better for both of them. But my thing is, when we think about the future of this team and the window of the opportunity that we have to be great, the window started last season. And I believe that with the recruiting classes we have coming in, you look down the road, the future is very bright. The opportunities are there, ACC, whatever league we're playing in. But when we needed somebody to step up, when arguably our most athletic and best player got suspended, it was Hopkins, it was Ellington, and a brilliant performance by Taj Boyd. I mean, you look at Taj Boyd's numbers. He goes 24 of 34 for 208 yards, one touchdown, one interception, a couple of big runs, though, key blocks downfield. Kudos to the wide receivers and to Brandon Ford and the tight ends for getting out downfield 
and blocking and really securing running lanes, not only for Taj Boyd, but for Andre Ellington. And Andre Ellington putting up 231 rushing yards, the most we've seen seen since C.J. Spiller in the Atlantic Coast Conference Championship game against Georgia Tech. And I agree with Nathan in the chat room. He said Boyd made much better decisions than he did last year. Now, he did take four sacks, but you could see considerably lighter on his toes this year. Made a big difference in getting out of a couple of plays. He had a 27-yard run with about 12 minutes to go that got Clemson across midfield. There was a big third down run where, where Brandon Ford just decleated an Auburn defender to give Boyd the space he needed. He didn't force the ball. Nathan is absolutely correct. He did not force the ball. His stats, you know, he's got 10, 10 incompletions there, but you could probably count up five or six drops. The ball was on point on almost every pass but one, which was the pass to Sammy, to Sammy Cooper that was intercepted. Bobbled it a little bit. It was behind him. Yeah, that was a big play at the time for Auburn. The out route was definitely open. He just threw it a little bit to the inside, and that gave the Auburn defender a chance to make a play on that ball. But everything else was pretty much dialed in for Taj Boyd. He understood he had to protect himself in this ball club and be that leader and not turn the ball over. And, and, and mark this down, too. There were a couple of plays, almost 100 yards worth, of plays called back by penalties that would have gone in Taj Boyd's favor, that would have been completions for Taj Boyd. All in all, if you got to have game one in Atlanta and you're worried about rust, you're worried about how your team's going to come out and play, Clemson fans, you've got to like what you saw in the ATL. It's been a while since you've been able to come out of there with a win. And it was a great feeling for Clemson Tiger fans to be able to celebrate there outside the Georgia Dome, realizing what a big, big win that was. Stay with us for more Clemson Hotline right here on the John C. Calhoun Radio Network. Dabo Sweeney of the Clemson Tigers, and you're listening to the Clemson Hotline on the John C. Calhoun Radio Network. Coach Dabo Sweeney, 14-0 and 0 are your Clemson Tigers when wearing orange tops and white pants. Unbelievable stat. And I'm sure that that is... Uh, going to be something that Clemson fans will keep in their minds as the season progresses forward. You know, it used to be a special thing to wear all orange in these ball games. All orange against a team like a Florida State or South Carolina when you had that opportunity at home. But orange tops, white pants, 14-0, and I believe is where they are right now. Hard to believe. But you go undefeated at home last season. You didn't see the purple jerseys last season or purple pants. I don't think you will this year. I really believe that Coach Dabo Sweeney, as I ironically rock, if you're watching the show on vocal, a purple orange and white shirt. But I don't think you're going to see that, to be honest with you. But you're going to get a chance this coming weekend to see your Clemson Tigers open up their home schedule with a game at Ball State. Excuse me, with a game against Ball State. And if you're going to that one, let me tell you about the Clemson University Conference Center 
and in. They have hotel rooms available for the Ball State game. You need to contact Sharon Franks. She's the general manager over there. 1-888-654-9020. That's 888-654-9020. Or email her, Sharon F. at Clemson.edu. The Clemson University Conference Center and Inn is the university's only hotel, and it's within walking distance to the stadium. So go by there, check it out. And if you heard the commercial there during the break earlier about uh, Seasons by the Lake, you know, all that's right there together at the same area. You can go out to the Tiger Tailgate on the terrace if you'd like to do that. So you can take, you know, you can kill two birds with one stone. Place to sleep, place to party and enjoy the game. Maybe walk on over. So uh, I hope that you will check them out. Again, that number is 888-654-9020 for the Clemson University Conference Center and in Hotel rooms for the Ball State game. Let's go ahead and show that team and give them a little bit of appreciation by showing up for an undervalued game, I think, in many of your minds. A game that you now expect to go down to Florida State undefeated. I'll tell you what, the other thing, and and we're going to talk more about the offense a little bit later in the game, a little bit later in the show, but I can tell you I was very impressed with Brent Venables. I don't know about you, but I, I, I wouldn't say that I was skeptical by any means. I understood that we had some youth on the defensive side of the ball, some young guys especially in the trenches, and I think my biggest question about the whole situation would be How would bringing a guy in like Brent Venables change the complexion, maybe, of this Clemson Tiger defense? There are a couple of things that I will will say that I noticed. I felt like fundamentally guys stayed in their lanes. We attacked, but we, we did not get ourselves out of position too often. We maintained the opportunity uh, to make plays if not at the line of scrimmage, just beyond. We didn't give – there was only one or two runs, I remember, the entire night where I felt like maybe we got a little out of position. One of those was a big one, though. Auburn faced – they were at the one-yard line. Clemson had pinned them in with a great punt. And on the first play, Stephon Anthony got a little bit out of position, overran it a little bit, made for a very easy block to open up a tremendous hole. And, and, and give a lot of credit to Meeks for making a big stop because that could have gone to a, to a, a, for a 99-yard touchdown run. I was so impressed, though, with the defensive line play. And it's, it's really cool seeing guys like Tavares Barnes and Vic Beasley down there with, like, single numbers, like a six and a three on your defensive line. It takes me back to the days of uh, – of, um, Oh, somebody transferred from Michigan. Somebody helped me in the chat room. Uh, P- Trevor Price, that's the guy, and I didn't get my help from the from the chat room here live. Trevor Price, who went, went on to play for the Broncos. It, it kind of reminds me of him because he wore the number seven. There's something a little bit intimidating about a guy. It makes him look a little slimmer. I mean, 99, when 99 is out there, it always looks like a big wide body. But when number nine is chasing you at the defensive line, or six, or three, it's a little bit scary. That guy kind of looks fast. You perceive that number to be a DB maybe, Uh, maybe a quarterback even. I like it. I I really do enjoy seeing that. And Vic Beasley with the big sack there at the end of the the game uh, just blew up his his man at the line of scrimmage. And they were young. They were a young, young offensive line as well. Their four tackles were all freshmen. So I don't think that, you know, if you're an Auburn fan and you're one of those people who said to me after the game, hey, this Clemson team – they're better than us. They're just flat out better than us. I don't think that means that you can't get back there. You've had some great recruiting classes. The problem that Auburn faces, much like Mississippi State and Ole Miss and everybody else in the Western Division, is the fact that as much as you can reload, LSU and, and, and Alabama reload that much more. I agree with Nathan. He says that Coach Venables adapted the game plan on the fly. And I didn't see our linebackers looking around trying to figure out what was going on or what we were doing. We looked very, very sure of ourselves at the snap. 
which I think is which I think is a big difference than where we were this time last season. Obviously, the one interception was basically like a glorified punt. Kyle Frazier just threw the ball up on a big third down play. You knock that down. I mean, you know, do you risk it? I think you make the interception. There was some argument about whether or not what the right play to make there is. And Clemson didn't really make a the, the big defensive play that I thought we would to swing the momentum. But what we did do is every time our backs were against the wall, every time that Auburn was within scoring position, they were down in the red zone when they had a chance to punch it in to maybe knock the wind out of your sails a little bit, the defense manned up. They made enough plays to keep Auburn in check, forcing them into four field goals, which I think was just a huge, huge benefit in this game for Clemson, to only give up one touchdown in the four field goals. Now, on the flip side, Auburn's offense didn't always help themselves either. Bad penalties, much like Clemson in the red zone. You know, they they hurt themselves. They shot themselves in the foot. But you'll you could take that. You'll you'll you you like to think that you maybe forced some of that on your opponent. But there was a one play in particular where I believe it was Tig Willard jumped up and tipped the ball, and then Corey Crawford almost reeled it in. That's the kind of play that I was thinking we were going to make and really blow that game open. Crawford just barely just couldn't quite get his hands on that football. And I don't know if he would have scored. I think they would have run him down. But I can tell you, it's plays like that that I think you're going to see more of. I don't recall the last time we had a linebacker. I remember Courtney Brown, obviously, last season with an interception return for a touchdown. But a linebacker basically snaked the ball out of the flats and take one back for a touchdown. We had a couple opportunities in this game. Uh, Tig Willard, I think, missed a chance at one right there. If he could have gotten his hands on that ball a little bit better, maybe he takes that one. Uh, then on the other side, there was a play where Stephon Anthony had a chance to make a big play like that. And I wondered, because you saw so much of that during Brent Venable's time at Oklahoma, if you would start to see those kinds of turnovers being forced by this Clemson team. Now you've got a couple of tune-up games here with Ball State and Furman coming up. And how Clemson, I think how Clemson's offense, how their rhythm flows, do we have a big defensive play to get them a little bit more swagger and, you know, just a little bit more uh, confidence going into Florida State that we can force E.J. Manuel to make bad plays. Now I know that's a long way down the road. But right now, you've kind of got a big confidence swing headed your way. You know, you can start the season off playing a cupcake, a cream puff game if you want to. And there are plenty of schools out there that do it. I think, uh, what was it, Oklahoma State put up 84 points versus nobody university. And Clemson's done that in the past. And this Ball State game and this Furman game should be those type games if we play to the level that we should. Now, I'm pretty certain everybody's going to be resting after the half so some of the numbers may drop for a guy like Andre Ellington and Ellington might have 150 plus yards this coming weekend but that may just be in a half he may only have 75 yards I don't think there's going to be any risking anybody of the utmost importance to our offensive success against Ball State and Furman you can bet We'll still be as fast-paced as we were, and we're still going to attack. But those guys, as soon as we can get them to the bench, we will. And when we come back here on the Clemson hotline, we're going to tell you a little bit more about our thoughts on this Clemson offense and just how quickly they got to the line of scrimmage and ran plays. Phenomenal. I'll pose this question to you. If you're in the chat room or if you're on Twitter, Let us know. You can tweet to us, hashtag TNTalk. Are we the fastest team in America right now? Are we faster than Oregon, who had 50 points by the half against uh, another coach you might be familiar with, Gus Malzahn's Arkansas State team? We'll be right back. Everybody sing Tiger Rag at 
the top of your lungs and we'll party like it's 1981. Enjoy the Clemson football season at Seasons by the Lake Restaurant. Tiger Tailgate on the Terrace at Seasons Restaurant will be held every Clemson football game day, rain or shine, home or away, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. for those day games and noon to midnight for the evening kickoffs. Enjoy a large screen TV, a Bloody Mary and mimosa bar, specialty drinks, and a great tailgate menu all on the Seasons Terrace. For more information, call 656-7444. Or visit their Facebook page, facebook.com slash seasons by the lake. I hope to see you on the terrace. We scoop the poop. Dutycalls.com. When nobody else will do it. Dutycalls.com. To make that dog poop go away. Call or click for a free quote today. When nature calls. We answer. To get a free quote for dog poop removal, go to dutycalls.com now. D-O-O-D-Y C-A-L-L-S Dutycalls.com In the Midlands area, dial 1-800-DUTY-CALLS. They're number one and number two. Hate the thought of shopping? All that hassle and can't find what you're looking for anyway? We understand. Retail stores make it difficult. Instead, try www.edistooutdoors.com. Edisto Outdoors features performance apparel and gear engineered for performance, comfort, and style. Edistooutdoors.com. You'll enjoy the shopping and you'll enjoy the products. Great products from people who care. Are you a landowner who owns more than 10 acres that's interested in selling timber or pulpwood off your property? Cross Creek Timber is a full-service timber procurement company that buys standing saw timber and pulp wood. They're staffed with professional licensed foresters and fully insured with both workers' comp and general liability insurance. Let Cross Creek Timber develop the appropriate harvesting plan for your property and answer any questions regarding forest management. Call today, 864-517-3620. That's 864-517-3620 for your free woodland evaluation or visit www. Dot CrossCreekTimber.com. Hey, sports fans, listen up. If you're a fan of the Gamecocks, the Citadel Bulldogs, or you just simply get chills from the Tigers running down the hill, then CRM Sports has a weekly show just for you. Even if Cocky and the Tiger make your blood boil, then just tune in for a good laugh. Each week, Gamecock fans hear the CRM Sports show Carolina Crowline broadcasting live from downtown Columbia. And Clemson fans enjoy the Clemson Hotline, broadcasting live just miles away from their beloved Death Valley. It's fun, independent, objective, and informative talk about your favorite college team. To listen to the various CRM Sports Collegiate Sports Talk podcasts, visit iTunes and search for CRM Sports. And the action-packed shows will be just a free click away. CRM Sports, check them out on iTunes and get all the inside info on your favorite Southern team. CRM Sports, we know Southern Sports. Welcome back in, Clemson Tiger fans, to another edition of the Clemson Hotline. As always, the phone lines are open, 803-450-0086. That's 803-450-0086. We would love to hear from you here on the program. Or you can tweet to us, hashtag TNTalk. Our question before we went to break was, are we the fastest team in the country? And a couple of folks debating it in the chat room. In fact, it's dueling Nathans in the chat room going back and forth on this. Oregon seems to be maybe just slightly faster than Clemson right now. There's a major adjustment, though, that Clemson has put in this season. And I can tell you the one thing that I I am just dumbfounded by with how quick we are is that I don't understand how the offensive linemen know what the plays are. I don't know how the offensive linemen know what we're running because they go to the ball. If it's if the ball, let's just say that the ball goes out of bounds on the right-hand side of the field and they know that the ball is going to be spotted at the right hash. 
Dalton Freeman is already in his stance at the right hash, ready to go. And we told you on Tiger Net Talk that Clemson had been working with Taj Boyd on getting him to run up the field and not play watch. Get up the field and get under center. It reminds me so much of what we saw at the beginning of Rich Rodriguez's career at Clemson as the offensive coordinator. How quickly we got to the line. The pace was so intense that a defensive line like Auburn's, who has some stud players, Lemonier is just an unbelievable guy. You got to see brief moments of how good of a player he is. But at the midpoint of the second quarter, the midpoint of the second quarter, Auburn is sucking wind. You have to take advantage of that fact Clemson did. Dabo Sweeney basically talking with Andre Ellington, talking with Taj Boyd, the offensive line. Those guys said, you know what, we're gonna, we, we want to run the ball. Andre Ellington carries it 26 times, 231 yards. Had a long run of 68 late in the game to really put that game on ice. A couple of plays where he put his hands down. Uh, I mean, I don't know if that kid took karate as a child, but it wouldn't surprise me if he did. Um, that's the type of balance and focus you have to have to be a successful uh, to be successful at karate, I would say to be a successful karate person, but I don't really know what you call them. I'm sure there's a name. But Andre Ellington got it done when Clemson needed it. He didn't get in the end zone. But give credit to D.J. Howard, who ran hard again against Auburn. And how about Roderick McDowell? He didn't carry it much, three times, eight yards. That run he had to the end zone, though, after Ellington had made a big run to put Clemson in scoring position was a thing of beauty. And all day long, Clemson's offensive line was opening up gaping holes. And part of that is because of how good the pistol formation worked. When we wrote the article, we said, would Clemson pistol whip Auburn? I would say yes, that happened. And the realization after seeing it at the spring game, I don't think I really realized how good it could be and how much more effective it could be for us. Nathan Winter says, do you think our defensive identity is going to be bend but don't break style or will we grow into more of an attacking aggressive defense? I think, I'll be honest with you, I think we saw an attacking aggressive defense. We were fortunate maybe that they didn't get into the end zone. A couple of blown coverages, you know, they, they had one uh, to Lutzenkirchen where a linebacker released him. Um, I, I can't remember who it was. I, I think it might have been Spencer Shuey that released him, and there was no safety help. We were fortunate. I think Meeks also made that tackle as well. Meeks was all over the field. Give him a lot of credit. But our defensive strategy seemed to be to be aggressive. Our linebackers were jumping up, getting their hands in the passing lanes, getting their hands on balls. Uh, there was a third down play late. I believe it was on the final drive for Auburn, maybe the next to last drive for Auburn, where we almost sent the house after Kyle Frazier. We were like, if you can beat us, beat us. And I, I think we do have some issues still with the secondary. Part of that because of Martin Jenkins, of course, red shirting. You lose a guy like Martin Jenkins, uh, who's who's got a lot of experience. But all in all, I think as we go further through the season, I really believe that because of some of that pressure that the defense will create, it'll make up for maybe uh, some of the issues that we've had in the secondary early. And in fact, on the touchdown throw to Emory Blake, I, I've, I've watched that one a couple of times, and I can't figure out what we were doing. I, I've watched it, and it, it just is a bizarre formation, a bizarre way we lined up. We had the two corners one-on-one -on, -one on the right-hand side of the field, we had both safeties playing on the far left hash, uh, almost right, just barely behind the linebackers. And I'm not sure what the thought process was. I don't know if it was something in the formation where we thought. Now, I'm sure uh, that somebody will probably ask the question, what happened there? I mean, if, if you lose that game, that's the question that people ask. What happened on that play? Now, Brent Venables may be able to avoid it because we won. 
But I just wondered if we saw something, we thought they were tipping their cap. Now back to the offense real quick. We've got a couple more minutes before we have to get out of here for a break. But that pistol formation helps us so much more. Because when we were in uh, the old formation where we would have the running back offset to the left or right, we tipped our hat just a little bit as to which way we were probably going to run the ball. It didn't mean we always were going to. But the thing it did for the defense is it said if Andre was lined up to the left of Taj Boyd, he's probably going to be running to the right. So the initial step, and if you go back and watch film, the initial step a lot of times for the defensive lineman we were playing against was to their left so that they were making progress towards the flow of the play. And if, by chance, we were running a counter, Andre, one, was not getting momentum. He was having to take a step, stop, and then go back the other way, which meant that they could react to it and be basically right on track with where they needed to be. Against this pistol formation, anytime they cheated, anytime they tried to guess, they were beaten. They were a step or two behind already. And the gaping holes were opening up. It was pretty amazing to see how much better and much more effective we were running the football, especially in short yarded situations. It is. It's about getting up the field. You're right. You're absolutely right in the chat room. It is about getting up the field, getting vertical, hitting the line of scrimmage. And Andre Ellington showed no fear in that regard. Absolutely no fear in that regard. The young man was outstanding. I can tell you for me, I was fired up about the way he played. I was fired up about the way this team played. And I would be shocked. I would be shocked if when we go down to Tallahassee to play against the Seminoles, if you don't see a gassed defensive line, a gassed defense, the best defense possibly in the country, just absolutely blown away by the speed and quickness of this team in week four. I can only imagine how much faster it will get. Oh, yeah, not to mention <laughs> a young man like Sammy Watkins being back in the mix. We'll be back right after this. She ever thought about didn't know it was gone the day she moved out in my head if I pointed it just Around the Atlantic Coast Conference this weekend, NC State on Friday night in the Georgia Dome against Tennessee was exposed. Amerson, David Amerson, got toasted a couple of times. 35-21, the Tennessee Volunteers win that one. Elon in North Carolina play to a 62-0 victory for the Tar Heels, Larry Fedora kicking off his career there. How about Maryland versus William and Mary? Maryland in a squeaker. Wins it 7-6, scoring a touchdown late in that one to pull away from the Tribe. Richmond and Virginia. It was Virginia, 43, Richmond, 19. Miami and Boston College. This goes to tell you just how little Miami really means right now to this conference. I don't think anybody really knew that game was going on. That's how far Miami has fallen. But they did get a win, 41-32 to in that one. So the Hurricanes are 1-0 in conference play, and Boston College is at 0-1 already uh, in Atlanta Coast Conference play. Florida State 69, Murray State 3. Wake Forest beat Liberty 20-17. Duke over Florida International, 46 to six to 26. Duke used a 30-point second quarter in that game to pull away from FIU. And, of course, the big game in the Coastal Division, Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech. I know everybody's looking forward to that. Now, 
in the past two games against Auburn, Clemson has put up 1,152 total yards. In the past three games, if you go back to 2010, we've put up 1,566 yards against this vaunted SEC defense. And I say vaunted a little bit in jest. But nonetheless, I know that you all uh, are excited about where things are headed. There was a a little chat going on about who was going to step up, you know, offensively. And I think you, uh, you know, you had Jerron Brown not make a catch in this game, which I think was a little bit of a surprise for a lot of people. Brandon Ford with some drops, but he steps up, has five grabs, 51 yards, uh, tremendous blocks downfield. I, that's, I still give him credit for that. Sharon Peak had four catches for 21 yards. Martavis Bryant had a big grab that was nullified by, it was one of the big catches that was nullified by a penalty. I believe it was an illegal shift, and then Adam Humphreys had two catches as well. Uh, give Spencer Benton a lot of credit. Uh, he did a pretty good job with his three opportunities to punt the ball. And Chandler Cantanzaro goes four for four and two for two with a, a, an extra points. And I believe he's made his last eight field goals, excuse me, last 12 field goals. Um, you know, the kickoff situation, I think, changed maybe the way the game ended. Clemson left some points on the board. You know, you're at the, at the one-yard line, up by four, an opportunity to maybe punch it in. We settled for the field goal. But I think partially because we knew we could kick the ball off, out of the end zone and force them to go 75 yards to tie as opposed to 99 yards to win. The, um, the decision-making, uh, absolutely. Taj Boyd's decision-making, this is something being chatted about in the chat room live on vocal. His decision-making, pulling the ball down, getting himself out of trouble. You know, you put, you give Taj, you know, a couple of, you give him a 20-pound sack or a 25-pound sack to carry around with him out there, put a book bag on him with 25-pound weights in there, There are more than four sacks in this game. He got away from a lot of people because he was a lot quicker this season. He was a lot faster this year. Let me tell you people something, though. You want to have some fun? Go to the Tiger Tailgate on the Terrace at Seasons by the Lake. Every home football game day, every away football game day, it doesn't matter. Rain, shine, day, night. You can go out there and tailgate on the terrace with other Tiger fans. Don't feel like driving out of town? Good news. If you live in the Clemson-Greenville area or not, go over to Clemson and enjoy a Tiger tailgate on the terrace 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. for any day games and noon to midnight for any evening games. They've got a large screen TV, Bloody Mary, Mimosa Bar, all of that on the season's terrace. Give them a call for more information, 656 7-4-4-4. Seven four four four. You will not be disappointed. Check them out on Facebook.com backslash seasons by the lake. Now, for me, this was another great win for Clemson because we needed, you know, we we talked about this how how this game is bigger than a bowl game. Oddly enough. When you're playing a game of the magnitude that we just had, it is bigger than the bowl game last season. You could say to me, but winning an Orange Bowl and winning a BCS bowl game is huge. I agree. But if you're not playing for the national championship, it almost doesn't matter if you're in the Orange Bowl or the, you know, the weedeater.com bowl. That's just kind of where we are. In college sports today. If we're going to have two teams playing for the national title in this current system. If you're not playing in that game 1v2. Then if you're playing in what people can perceive to be the uh, next highest game or the bottom. If you win it you get the same prize. Not a whole lot. Maybe some exposure. You win game one. Neutral site against an SEC team, you have yourself in position still to make a run at that ultimate prize at the end of the year. And that's what I think impresses me the most right now about this team. Even though they found themselves down late in that game with 12 minutes to go, they didn't. did they give up? 
With 13 minutes left in that game, Auburn kicks a field goal and takes a 19-16 to lead. And I don't think anybody, to be honest with you, felt like Clemson could not put up the points necessary to win that game. And, and just seconds later, literally seconds later, Clemson moves the ball right down the field, runs the ball unbelievably well, and scores. And, and, and nobody is shocked. And I don't know about you, but, and I said this earlier, we left points on the table. Did we leave eight? Did we leave more? I'm not disappointed in 26 to 19. You shouldn't be either. This is a team right now that I think has to scare everybody because of how quick this offense is. I saw South Carolina playing against Vanderbilt. I saw South Carolina's defense sucking wind. They better hope, and I'm glad this is something they're going to have to work on, conditioning, because they better hope that they're better conditioned when November the 24th rolls around or the pitchfork will return. And you people know what I'm talking about. 528 total yards for the Tigers, 28 first downs, 10 passing touchdowns, 17 rushing touchdowns, uh, and they picked up one off of a penalty. Eight for 17 third down conversions. Last year's game, it was third down conversions. Gus Malzahn, it doesn't matter if it's Brian Van Gorder or Ted Roof. If it's third down and the money's on the line, I want the Clemson Tigers in my corner because we have found ways to get it done. It's been an impressive, impressive run since Chad Morse has been here. You can look at the end of the season and say, you know, what happened? Did people catch up with us? I think we found out a couple of nights ago in Atlanta that people didn't catch up with us as much as maybe we got a little bit uh, complacent. Tosh Boyd packing on some pounds hurt. Tosh Boyd maybe not having the confidence in the system and his teammates that he needed. I think we saw a little bit of a, a different Tosh Boyd. And this year, for, for another fact I want to state, is I feel like it is going to be a much more balanced attack the entire season. And I know last year, Andre Ellington had 1,100-some-odd yards rushing. You had tremendous numbers by Sammy Watkins and, and DeAndre Hopkins, but there's no excuse this year that you couldn't see a guy like Andre Ellington getting that 1,100, 1,200-yard mark and maybe even a guy like D.J. Howard getting in the neighborhood of 700 yards. I think it's a reasonable belief that we could get there because I don't think you can have Ellington carry that load the entire time. Cody Webb takes us out, and you are going to love hearing who is going to be with us on this Wednesday's TigerNet Talk. Unbelievable guest coming up this week. We'll tell you about that right after this. Stay with us. I used to sneak downtown with my fake ID and watch Doug McCormick rock TDs on a Friday night. Want to hear the sound of hassle-free traveling? All aboard! Amtrak takes the hassle out of traveling to over 500 destinations. You can stretch out in a spacious seat, relax in a sleeping car, and enjoy a hot meal in the dining car. And for those who want to kick back and take in the scenery, go right ahead. For everything you get on Amtrak, the one thing you won't get is this. So whether you're going to a family reunion or an away game, make it a whole lot nicer on Amtrak. Book your trip today at Amtrak.com or call 1-800-USA-RAIL. All aboard! Blake Austin of South Carolina Farm Bureau is an insurance agent you can count on to meet all your needs. Home, auto, health, life, you name it, Blake's got you covered, and he can save you on your yearly rates. Call him now for a free quote, 803-259-5008. That's 803-259-5008. Or just go to ClemsonSportsTalk.com and click on the Farm Bureau logo to be connected to Blake. Do like I do and work with the best agent around, and you can tweet that. Suffering from allergy congestion? Allegra D decongests. Allegra D depressurizes so you can breathe. Allegra D, a fast, non-drowsy antihistamine, plus a powerful decongestant that gives you 24 hours of congestion-free breathing. It even reduces swelling that can cause congestion and pressure. Allegra D, defense against allergy congestion. Look for Allegra D at the pharmacy counter. Starts working in one hour, applies to first dose only. Use only as directed. Visit Allegra.com.
Welcome back into Clemson Hotline. I'm your host, Lawton Swan. Thanks for being here with us once again, live on the front page of TigerNet.com, 9 p.m., Sundays and Wednesdays. Tune in for TigerNet Talk and Clemson Hotline. Tweet to us, hashtag TN Talk throughout the week, 803-450-0086. And if you're planning on going to the Ball State game, please check out the Clemson University Conference Center and in 888. 888- Eight six five four nine zero two zero. Hotel rooms are still available for that ball game. Contact Sharon Franks. You can email her Sharon F at Clemson Edu. The Clemson University Conference Center and Inn is the university's only hotel within walking distance to the stadium. You cannot beat that. You can have a big day and not worry about having to drive home. And if you want to see some snaps. If you want to talk about numbers of snaps, wait until this matchup against Ball State. Ball State against Eastern Michigan put up 596 total yards. They threw the ball 41 times. They rushed the ball uh, 55 times. I'll let you add that up for a second. 96, that's right, 96 snaps by Ball State in their matchup a 20 uh, excuse me a 37 to 26 victory over Eastern Michigan Clemson if you take a couple of the plays away that 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 uh where we were penalized and other things like that I believe ran 91 plays total I think we had 91 total snaps I know some of those were nullified because of the situation and we ran it slow a little late you know you think about that too uh, but yeah so you're going to see a whole lot of snaps in this game and uh, I can tell you this, I'm looking forward to the week and kind of analyzing this one as we move forward. I do appreciate everybody being here with us, Brandon, Nathan, Nathan, Sophie, everybody else who's been in the chat room. I appreciate you guys. Looking forward to talking with you uh, on TigerNet Talk a little later in the week as we will break down this ball game. It should be a good one if you're a Clemson Tiger fan. I really don't expect this to be one of the more pressing games this season but I can tell you anything can happen you always got to watch your back but this Clemson Tiger team seems focused I think in some ways 70 to 33 stuck in their crawl a little bit and they can say they put it behind them and put it in the rear view if they want to but I think you see a little bit of an edge right now not just maybe in the Clemson Tiger team but in Clemson Tiger Nation and I really believe that when you look at the fan base the way people responded in Atlanta The way people are looking forward to putting that Orange Bowl loss in the rearview mirror, all of a sudden you see a team that reminds you of what you saw early last year, and the opportunity still seems to be there. Until next week, I'm Lawton Swan signing off. And as always, y'all take care now, and go Tigers! Tigers!